Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on filter design. Okay, so for this video, okay, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design and develop a comb line band pass filter. Okay, so the comb line actually consists of array of couple resonator. So this video, I'm going to have an example. How can we actually design this comb line band pass filter? This will be the part 35 series discussion on filter design. So guys, if you're keen to know more about filter design, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome okay, to ask me through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video, this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, Thank you so much for strong support. Let's do a fun fact before we actually go on to the technical discussion on this comb line band pass filter. Okay, so this diagram here shows the structure of comb line band pass filter. You can see that these are like fin and you, you can clearly resemble this as a comb. So I believe this is why they actually get this name, which is called the comb line band pass filter. Okay, so let's come to the technical discussion. Okay, this comb line band pass filter is actually comprised of an array of couple resonator. Okay, so basically you can see that one all the way to the end, these are we call the array resonator. The resonators consist of lump element from one to n. Okay, so basically the, the element from one all the way to n, these are all the array of resonator, okay, which are all short circuit at one end. You can see that this end here, they are all short circuit. On the other end, okay, we actually have this lump capacitor. So we can see that we have all different lump capacitor okay, before again they will go to the short circuit. So basically, this is how does the comb line band pass filter actually look like. The input and output of the filter are through couple line element 0 and M plus 1. So this is actually the input. This is actually the output. So 0 and M plus 1, they are not the resonator while one all the way to n they are the array of resonator okay with the lump capacitor present the resonator line will be shorter than quarter wave long at resonator okay where this lambda g naught is actually the guided wave in the medium of propagation at the mid band frequency of filter in short okay if we have this loop capacitor then the length of the transmission line can be shorter or the length of the resonator can be shorter. It is interesting that if the capacitor will not present, okay, the resonator line will be a full quarter wavelength long at resonant, and the filter structure would not have any pass band at all when the line elements are actually constructed from a pure TEM model transmission line, such as strip line. Okay, now what is said, Okay, if there is no capacitor, which means that we don't have any capacitor, which means that this part also short circuit. And if we use a pure TEM model, okay, such as strip line, then we will not have any pass band characteristic at all. Okay, so because okay, if we want to implement this comb line band pass filter, then we need to use micro strip line. Okay, because micro strip line is not a pure TEM model, and therefore we actually will still have this band pass filter characteristics, okay, even without the capacitor. Okay, so this is because okay, for pure TEM mode, okay, such as strip line, the magnetic and electric field, they actually totally cancel each other, and therefore, we do not have this pass band characteristics. The larger the loading capacitor, okay, the shorter the resonator, okay, which means that the bigger the number of this capacitor C, okay, the shorter the length of the resonator. So this is and this actually will be desired okay, because our filter will become smaller. Okay, for instance, okay, if the resonator line are all 
Landau over 8 long at the primary pass band. The second pass band will be centered at somehow around four times the mid band frequency of the first pass band. Okay, which means that if let's say the length of the transmission line is about Landau over 8, okay, so we have the first pass band. The second pass band will be four times away from the first pass band. Okay, so these are all the formulas to calculate the comb line band pass filter. I would say that these are all very tedious. Okay, so as mentioned, these are all the formulas. Okay, but in this discussion, we are not going to use this formula to design a comb line band pass filter. Okay, so instead of just working on the self and mutant capacitor, okay, we use another alternative design approach. Okay, is to determine the dimension in terms of another set of design parameters consists of external quality factor and coupling coefficient. Okay, I have discussed this external quality factor and coupling coefficient on the hairpin bandpass filter design. I'm not sure whether uh, you still recall, but I will put the link under the description. So if you keen to know about this external quality factor and coupling coefficient, you can always see that particular video here. So I think th the design formula actually become much more easier. So instead of so many formulas here, you can see that there are tons of formula here. Okay, but now with this method, okay, we just need this set of formula to design the comb line band pass filter. Okay, so where QE1 and QEN are the external quality factor of the resonator at the input and also at the output. Okay, so basically this QE1 okay, will be at the input, this QEN will be at the output, and this MI and I, I plus one, they are actually the internal coupling coefficient between the adjacent resonator. Remember, it consists of array of resonator. So basically, all this M, okay, they are actually the discussion on the coupling coefficient okay, between the adjacent resonator. And we actually need the help of an EM simulator okay, to do this part. Okay, again, I will put the video okay, how we actually do this part. Okay, in the description, so you have a better understanding on this. I will come to this again. Okay, so before I continue on the design of the comb line band pass filter, I'd like to urge you, if you have learned something, okay, remember to give this video a like and also subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Okay, let's come to the example. Okay, so assume okay, that a 5 pole championship low pass prototype filter with a 0.1 dB pass band ripper has been chosen for the band pass filter design. Okay, the low pass prototype parameters, we have this G0 and G6 is equals to 1, G1 equals to G5 equals to 1.1468, G2 equals to G4 which is 1.3712 and G3 is equals to 1.975. Okay, so all this you can actually look at the so-called the the tables uh, for Chapichel with 0.1 dB. Okay, so basically you will be able to obtain all this number. Okay, the band pass filter is designed to have a fractional bandwidth of 0.1 and a mid band frequency of 2 gigahertz. So basically at the frequency at 2 gigahertz, which is the center point of the band pass filter, we are going to have a fractional bandwidth of 0.1. Okay, so this is the actual solution. Okay, but let's imagine that we do not we do not know this. Okay, I just put it here so that we can have a fruitful discussion. Okay, so we are going to have five pole. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we are going to have five resonator. Okay, remember these are not resonator. So basically, these are we call the input and also the output. So they are not called resonator. And we want the filter to be symmetric. So basically, there will be a center line here. So from here, I can see that okay. QE1 will be equal to QE5, which I have mentioned here. Okay, M12 will be equal to M45, which I mentioned here. And M23 will be equal to M34 because they are symmetric. So therefore, this is the first thing that I conclude. Okay, so QE1 will be equal to QE5. M12 will be equal to M45. And M23 will be equal to M34. Then I need don't need to do another time. So basically, this is the first thing that I'm going to do. Next, okay, I'm ready to calculate Okay, the value for QE1. Okay, so the formula to calculate QE1 is actually here. So if you have not able to see, you can see that this is the formula to calculate QE1. You can see from here, which is G0, G1, and FPW. So therefore, over here is G0, G1, FPW. So G0, okay, you can see is equals to 1. G1 is actually equals to 1.1468 here. 
FPW is 0.1, so you just punch your calculator. You should be able to get this 11.468. Okay, as for M12, okay, so you can see the M12 formula is actually here. Okay, so this M, this is 1 and 2. So therefore, over here will be G1 and G2. So therefore, you can see from this equation here. Okay, again, I think this is just a simple punching of calculator. You should be able to get this value here. Same for M23. Okay, so you, you just need to change the denote to G2 and G3. Again, you can punch your calculator. You should be able to get all this reading here. So once with this, we are ready to design the comb line band pass filter. Okay, so the comb line resonator, okay, they cannot be landed over for long. Okay, if we are going to realize this with a pure TEM transmission line, like a strip line, which I have illustrated earlier on. However, okay, this is not necessary for the case of microstrip line. Okay, so for microstrip line, it is not a pure TEM transmission line. So therefore, this comb line filter okay, can be implemented. Okay, so for demonstration purpose, okay, we allow the microstrip resonator to be quarter wavelength long and we don't require any capacitive loading in this filter design. Okay, the microstrip filter is designed on a commercial substrate, okay, a Roger board with a relative dielectric constant of 10.8 and the so-called substrate thickness is actually 1.27 mm. Okay, with the EM simulation, okay, I have earlier on discussed on the happen how we actually can have the EM simulation okay, for this uh, external quality factor and coupling coefficient. So basically over here, okay, I, I will have this discussion. I'll put the link below so you will be able to understand how we actually can obtain the value here. Okay, so basically we work directly with the filter dimension. Okay, firstly, we fix the resonator okay, to have the width of 0.8 mm. So firstly, we need to fix the width of the resonator. So this can be any arbitrary width number. Okay, but for this case here, I just fix at 0.8 mm here. Okay, but for the so called the input and output line. Okay, so for example, over here, the input and output line, if you still remember the last example here, this input and output line, they cannot be 0 0.8 meter because these are all so called 50 ohm to match the 50 ohm. So therefore, I cannot afford them to be at 0 0.8 mm. So therefore, I will fix them at 1.1 mm wide so as to match this 50 ohm termination impedance. So basically, we are ready to design this comb line band pass filter. Okay, so like I mentioned here, how to obtain this graph, okay, you actually can do with the help of some EM simulation. Okay, again, I have done this discussion using this hairpin line structure. Okay, I will put the particular video okay, under the description so you can take a close look how can I actually obtain this graph here. So basically, this design curve is all obtained by the full wave EM simulation okay, for designing the micro strip line comb line and filter. Okay, so basically we can obtain the external quality factor and also the coupling coefficient. Okay, let's come to the design. Okay, for the first one here, we have earlier on calculated that QE1 and QE5, which is equal to 11.468. So at the external quality factor, because these are all the, at the input and also at the output. Okay, so therefore we need to refer to the external quality factor. Okay, we go and find 11.468, which is around 11.5. So we draw a line here. So touching the graph here and we draw a line here. So we find that the gap is actually 0.56 mm. Okay, so basically this is the first thing that we've done. Second, okay, we are going to get this M12. Okay, so M12 earlier on we have calculated, which is equal to 0 0.07978, okay, which is about 0 0.08 here. So again, I draw a line here and from here, I will obtain that the gap is actually 1.64 mm. And then last but not least, on this M23 and also M34, okay, which is equal to 0 0.06, around 0 0.06, slightly close to 1. So therefore, I draw this 0 0.06077 here. So from here again, I get the gap, which is about 2.42 mm. So once I have all this, I'm ready to design the comb line band pass filter. Okay, so these are all the data that I obtained early on. So basically for QE1, the external one, so the gap is 0 0.56. Okay, so basically I have calculated this, the gap is 0 0.56. So therefore over here, the gap will be 0 0.56. They are symmetric, so they are the same. As for M12, okay, it's actually equals to 1.64. Okay, you can see that this is actually 1.64. So over here will be the same, 1.64. 
for M23 will be 2.42. So this part here will be 2.42. Same for this part over here, which is 2.42. Okay, one thing I want to highlight, okay, this will be short circuit. Okay, so how you create a short circuit is through the VR. Okay, you drill a hole and then touch the ground for microchip. Then this part will be short circuit. Okay, so the length of this resonator will be a quarter wavelength. Okay, with respect to the uh, with respect to the middle band of the pass band here. So basically, with this, you can see that I have successfully designed a comb line band pass filter. Quite easy. Okay, easy steps to design this. Okay, so let's take a look on the simulate frequency response of this comb line band pass filter. Okay, the EM simulate filter performance show an interesting feature. Okay, there is an antenation pole, okay, which is here. There is an antenation pole near the high edge of the pass band, okay, resulting in high selectivity on that side. So we actually has a very high selectivity on the upper side of the pass band here. Okay, this antenation pole is slightly due to cross coupling between non-adjacent resonator. Okay, additionally, okay, the second pass band of the filter is actually centered at approximately 6 GHz, okay, which is about three times the mid-band frequency. Okay, as expected, okay, since the lambda over 4 resonator are used without any lump capacitor. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Okay, in this discussion, I have discussed how can we actually design a comb line band pass filter. I have an example and also how to calculate the key parameters, for example, the gap between the resonator okay, in order to accomplish the design of this comb line band pass filter. With this, that's all for today. Thank you so much and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.